idcwoodcraft.com. Hello, my CNC brother or sister. I'm Garrett with idcwoodcraft.com, your CNC router bit supplier. Welcome to this video where I'm going to teach you exactly how to get the post processor set up in your Vectric software so that either by the time you're done with this video, you will have it set up in your software or within five minutes after you watch this video and you'll be ready to run that amazing project you've been wanting to make. Now, a couple notes right up front. Number one, this what I'm gonna show you is going to work for Cut2D Desktop, Cut2D Pro. VCarve Desktop, VCarve Pro, and Vector Aspire version 11 or higher. I will tell you how to find out what version your software is. It will not work for version 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or 0, <laughs> okay? Now, I just want to let you know I had a little bit of an audio problem, so the audio in this explanation is going to be a little bit distorted, but you'll be able to understand me anyway. So, we're going to dive into the software and get you set up. <laughs> you're going to be all set up by the time you're done with this thing. Let's go. IDCwoodcraft.com Okay, we are in the Vectric software, and what I'm going to show you will work in all the Vectric software, that being Cut2D, VCarve, and Aspire for the version 11 software. It'll probably be good for version 12, 13 on ad infinitum, at least for a while, but this does not apply to version 10 or less. To know what version you have of the Vectric software, you look in the upper left corner of the software, all the way up to the top of the screen, it'll tell you what your software is. In this case, mine says VCarve Pro V11.010. That means I have version 11 with an update that is titled .010. Yours may say VCarve Desktop, it may say Cut2D or Spire, depending on what you have, that's what's gonna be listed up there. What you are looking for is the version number, which is 11. So long as you have that, then what I'm gonna show you will work. The first thing you have to do is get over to the toolpath side of your software. Right now, we have this menu on the left side, which is your drawing side. That's where you design all your work up. We want to get to the other side where we create our tool paths. So you do that by clicking the blue arrow button right here. Select it and we transfer over to the tool path side of the screen on the right. You'll see a bunch of icons, six rows of them. The first three rows, one, two, and three, are for telling the Vectric software how your tool path is going to be written. You click into those and set up the way the router bits are going to cut the various aspects of your project, like this welcome sign. Which, by the way, if you want the vector for this, I have it available on Etsy and on my website. It's a great first project, so if you want that, I'll put a link down below in the description. The next three rows are the ones we're going to pay attention to, and specifically the bottom row and the icon all the way over to the right. When you hover your mouse over it, it says Save Toolpath. This is where we're gonna set up the post processor for your machine. Select that button and you'll come into the menu that says Save Toolpaths. And you'll have some check boxes just below that title. What we want to look at is the post processor section just below this line right here. The first thing it says is machine. And you'll have something in that little box next to the machine. In this case, it says desktop. If you click that, you may or may not have another selection. Vectric defaults to these two selections. This is generally used if you have more than one CNC router and they are of different sizes. If you want to differentiate between them in the software, this is where you'll do that. Now it's safe to say if you were watching this video, you are on your first CNC router. Don't worry about which one you're using. I would just suggest pick one and stick with it. 
because you only need one anyway. Once you have all this set, you're not going to need to set anything else up unless you get a different CNC router later on down the road. So desktop or large, doesn't really matter. Just pick one and roll with it. Below that, it says post processor and there's another drop down box and you're going to see right now in mine it says grbl inch with a star in parentheses dot g c o d e or g code we'll explain what this means in just a moment and you can see down below here everything is grayed out the reason all these are gray is because no tool paths are checked down below so you want to check whatever toolpath you want to write G-code for or just check the little checkbox next to it and then that'll enable you to generate your G-code. For now, we're just going to uncheck that because you see we just popped a bunch of text in here. We don't need that for what we're doing. So I'm going to uncheck that just to clean this up. What I want you to focus on is the little pad with the pencil on it next to machine and desktop or large whatever it may say you want to select that button and a window is going to pop up it has several different things on it it's got the title at the top desktop which you notice was the same as what's over in the area right over here if we click that it's also going to show large so these are the two segments that are already defined in vectric and you can always add more if you want the way that you would add another segment if you have another machine is simply click the plus button and that will give you the opportunity to add a new machine. And if we click this now, you see that there are three items here. So we don't really need that right now, but now you know how that works. When we're on new machine, I'm going to simply select the garbage can right there and that'll get rid of it. And now we've defaulted back to large. We're going to go to large. We're going to leave this on large because I don't have a desktop machine. If you have a long mill CNC router, then you have a bench top machine, not a desktop machine. So we'll just stay with large. In your software, when you originally loaded up, no matter which one you're on, large or desktop, this big white field down below is going to be left blank. And this is where we have to select our G code. So we have the large up here and we are actually active in the large because that's what's selected here and this is the name of large by the way i'm just going to show you that we can change this name so i have a long mill we'll change it to long mill uh, when we click apply down below it will change the name to long mill and that name will now show up over in this area as well once we click OK. We'll just show you real quick. That way you can define your machines even more precisely. So I clicked OK. And now it says Long Mill over in this area. I click it as Desktop and Long Mill. So in order to change that back, we simply go back into the little notepad. And we can change that back to Large and we'll click apply okay so let's get back to this this is where you need to pick out your post processor for your cnc router mine is already populated so we're just going to add another one but we're going to pretend that yours is blank to get your post processor you come over to the little plus button and select that and a long list of cnc routers is going to pop up it's got a little slide bar next to it and if you scroll down you'll just keep going and going and going and going these are all the post processors that vectric has imported on behalf of the cnc router machine companies that are out there so many of these are quite defined for very specific machines if you have a grbl or a gerbil based machine so what you want to do is look for your brand machine in this list. So let's say you have a Bob CNC. You can either scroll down or you can simply type in BOB, Bob CNC. So I just typed in BOB and it took me straight down to Bob's. And if you have a Bob's, then you select that and it's selected when it's highlighted blue and you simply click the select button and now Bob's CNC has populated onto the list.
Now let's go hit plus again. And we're going to type in long mill, L-O-N, and it does not show up, which means that long mill is not in here. So what happens if you can't find your CNC router on this list in the Vectric software? Well, don't worry. There is a way to figure it out. There's actually two ways. Number one is in the case of like long mill, which is a benchtop CNC router, which runs on the GRBL firmware there's a GRBL post processor in this list, which works just fine. I think Long Mill doesn't have a post processor in there because they got the Vectric too late or Vectric was, had already had all the posts all populated in there uh, a long time ago before they could get to it. But the other thing that you would need to do, especially if you have larger machines, I'm talking about the, the 10, 20, 30, and up thousand dollar machines, these have a lot more requirements of the post processor. So you have to go to the company that sold it to you and ask them for the post processor and then you'll have to import it into the software. I'll cover that at the end of the video since that's not relevant to most people who are watching this which are benchtop owners, desktop owners, or just smaller machines. So <clears throat> the two things, number one if you can't find it you can uh, contact the company and number two if it's like uh, a common platform like the GRBL which most of your benchtop and desktop CNC routers run on you just pick the GRBL post processor and you should be fine all right let's keep going idcwoodcraft.com the if you cannot find your machine on this list then you want to determine what operating system your machine is if it's a home base benchtop or desktop, it is probably a GRBL platform. So you would type in GRBL and GRBL gets highlighted right here. Let's find another machine. We'll go to Onefinity. O N and Onefinity pops up. So you'd select that. Now, before we move on, I want you to notice something. You see the Onefinity. There are two of them, several of them. One, two, three, four. They have a Onefinity inch, Onefinity metric, and another inch for the Onefinity laser and one metric for the Onefinity laser. But if you look at the little star dot uh, alpha, the alpha code next to it, it's different for this one here. This one says G code. That says NGC. So this is the extension that your G code file is going to be written in. You've seen files that say something.exe as an executable file or something.svg for a drawing file that can be imported into any design software. So this is particular to your machine. So you want to be sure that you understand what what your control software is going to interpret. For example, the long mill G sender control software is going to recognize G code, whereas the UGS will recognize a TXT extension. So if you're using a post processor and you generate a toolpath and you can't find it in the directory that you know you put it in, you are probably using the wrong post processor because your software is not seeing the, that extension. Okay, so we're gonna go back to GRBL. Well, since I already have it populated in mind, let's go ahead and populate Onefinity. So I just type in ON and there it came up and I'm gonna select the inch one, which is highlighted and we hit select. And now I've got three, I've got Bob CNC, GRBL and Onefinity. You only need one for your machine. So I'm just demonstrating the different ways that you can do this but you only need the one for you so we populated this now let's say you made a mistake and you didn't have one infinity you had the one that was next to it simply click on the one infinity and when you do the little garbage can here will highlight select that garbage can and it will remove it i'm going to get rid of the bob cnc because i don't use my bob cnc anymore and i'm going to delete that so we'll say now that you populated the GRBL, what you do now is click the Apply button and OK button. Now, I need to step back and bring the Bobs back in because I want to show you, B-O-B. -B. 
So I'm just going to repopulate the bobs in here. I'm going to say apply and now bobs is in there and click OK. And the reason I did that was because I want to show you that we now have two post processors in here. We have the Bob CNC and the GRBL. So this is the way you can work it. And again, if we want to eliminate one of these because we made a mistake, simply click the little notepad with the pencil on it again, and the menu will once again pop up. Select the one that you didn't want, the Bob's, and I want to garbage can that. Click Apply and click OK and now you're ready to go. Now when you're ready to generate your toolpath, you just want to make sure that your post processor is highlighted here. If it's not, click the drop down and select the post processor for your specific machine. And then click whatever toolpaths you want to run and generate and then click save toolpaths. If you know exactly how to set your post processor up now, then give me a thumbs up and please give me a comment down below. Say, Garrett, I got it. Thank you so much. I just want to make sure that I taught you the right way. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're relatively new to CNC routers because not only do I dive deep into projects like this, but I also teach you how to get your CNC router set up and a lot of other CNC stuff that, that you have to know as you move along. So with that, if you haven't set it up already in your software with your post processor, go do it right now and get to making that amazing project. IDCwoodcraft.com